Uh, an undergraduate, uh, I was a sculptor, and after getting out of undergraduate school, I moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And of course, the whole uh, Native American Southwest art was very connected to weaving and blankets and also baskets. And uh, because of, I was making three-dimensional objects at, in undergraduate school, baskets seemed to be the ideal thing to do because the, they have a great uh, history and beauty to them and they're also three-dimensional objects. So I tried it out and found it to be uh, exciting. It was a, a time of, of exploration and I knew nothing of weaving or basket making. So then all the tools like looms and tools and stuff, I had to make, make up the way I thought they should be or, or tried to and slowly did learn how to do it. After the two years I was in Albuquerque, I moved back to the East Coast and went to graduate school in Philadelphia. I enrolled in the textile department instead of the sculpture department because I wanted to follow this ideas and stuff I had learned in New Mexico. After graduating from Tyler School of Art, I moved to Alfred, New York, which is way up in the western corner of New York State. That was in the early 70s, and so it was also a hippie time. You know, it was the time when people were going back to the, to the forests and so forth. So it was kind of an environment that was just set up perfect for what I, what I was doing. And so it just made sense to follow that path. And I built a stone house and you know, we didn't have electricity and did the whole sort of back to earth hippie life because I was in the forest. I was out in the country and there was plenty of uh, material that baskets are made from like Bruce roots and pine bark and cedar and all those things was part of the environment out there. So I never had to buy any material. I could just go out and collect it. So it was never a problem of having a money to buy, to go to an art store. I didn't need an art store. I had an art store on the top of the hill. You could go right out your door and if you knew what you were looking for, you could find stuff that was been, had been used for thousands of years. It was, and it was very strong and pliable and all the things that it needed to be to, to do what I was doing. It's a very slow process to use natural materials. There's, you have to walk the forest, you have to find the material, you have to uh, process the material, you have to let the material dry, and then you wet it to bend it. And so there's a lot of steps. A lot of times people say, well, how long did it take you to make that? And I can't tell them because what do I include? Do I include walking in the woods? And do I include all the things that it takes to prepare the material? Take a piece of bark, you can't just stick it on them. I don't know what, you, you've got to process it. You've got to thin it out. You've got to make it flexible and you've got to make it sturdy so that when it's done, it's not too flexible. So there's so many steps to it. It's not easy to say how long it takes to make a piece. A basket is just a layer that holds things when you put them in it. And the body has a same idea as an outside surface that everything goes inside of it, all our innards. And so that skin layer, the one we see when we see someone, is nothing more than a container that holds that person together. And that's what baskets do. So I could start to feel like no matter what I made, it was both a container like a basket is, and there were also containers of many different uh, things and even even an idea like a sentence has a beginning and an end so it's a sentence is, is contained and, and you can just uh, go down the list of thousands of things that are you could compare if you were concerned or if you wanted to uh, to connect them to baskets there's an obvious uh, connection between ourselves you know our lifespan our bodies or whatever to a tree it's the same thing it's just a different scale and time frame and so i think that unconsciously draws people to it because it's it's like being part of them well there's a difference between two dimension and three dimension i'm not a painter and i don't really 
call myself a sculptor, but the reason for that is I, I like the idea that I'm not just another sculptor, that I'm trying to find ways of doing things that are, that are not, that doesn't fit into a category. Baskets don't really have enough following or whatever to become a means in itself. And so you can call it a basket if you want to, and, then, and that's what I do. It's more fun to somebody say, what do you do? And I say basket maker, and they like, like, like they don't know. It's like I'm speaking a foreign language. And, uh, and of course, I love all that because it's funny. Thank you.